Yes. Yo, and welcome back to my fo uh, channel, folks. Today I'm joined by Mikael Anton Curier. Thank you so much for taking your time out to talk to me. Yeah, no problem. My pleasure, mate. Good, good. Um, so, obviously you've had a great career so far. Well, yeah, you've had a quite a busy career, let's just be said. So what was your first football and memory of wanting to be a professional footballer? To be honest with you, I was watching a lot of, uh, obviously I was playing a lot with my friends and seeing a suburb and in Paris or uh, in the Caribbean. Um, and then while I was playing, I was always uh, pretending I was uh, one of the top strikers. It was Marco van Basten, it was... Uh, I had, um, what's it called, Assel Bang, Batistuta, uh, I had great player George Weyer and stuff like that. And I was just saying to myself, you know, um, I want to be this, I want to be, I want to do this, you know, and a lot of people said I, I have talent. So it was a dream of mine, uh, going to school, obviously, uh, to help me to, to, to how to talk to people and stuff like that. But my, my main focus was to be a football player. Best club you've played at? Uh, you want me to say Ibs, huh? <laughs> no, just uh, your honest opinion. <laughs> no, no, no. The best club, I would say, uh, I played, it was the... I will, I will not say the best club because all of them was, was magnificent. I had a great time to accept in, in Kazakhstan. I had a great time everywhere, uh, in every club, every country I've been. Um, but it was when I signed my first pro contract in Preston with David Moyes. That was uh, something, uh, Tony, um, the, 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 the chairman at the time, um, I remember it was, uh, I got my pen and uh, with my mom because I was only 16 um, with my agent at the time and Devin was, um, you know, he was well known in England and everybody was talking about him being the next manager of Manchester United. And I didn't know the guy. So, and he was Scottish. I could not understand a word he was saying, but um, I remember I was shaking. The first day I signed my contract, I was shaking, but I was so dirty. Uh, focus of doing and being what I wanted to be. So what was it like playing for him back in the 2007-2008 season? Everybody will tell you I loved every second of it. It was, it was an annoying uh, when John Collins left and mixed up at line and got rid of all the French-speaking person there, which was outrageous to be fair uh, because the team was good enough to to be in the top three definitely uh, we had a little dip which happened uh, through the season even Celtic or Rangers always have a little dip um, but um, why this that that year no word of a lie that team was unbelievable we had everything from defending defense Two strikers. Um, it was. It was the group was absolutely fine, and uh, John Collins and uh, Tommy. I remember they were they were great people. Um, unfortunately, I don't know what happened behind the scene, but I meant to sign a new contract, and then you know, I mean, makes you party and then just come along and said like, "Well, you." I don't know what's going on, but you so far and now you have to wait for your time. And um, to be fair, it worked out good for me. I went on loan in the, in the, I remember he told me like, oh, if you go and do well in Dundee, then you can come back and sign this contract and this and that. <laughs> I played 11 games and I scored nine goals. I didn't know what to do, what else to do. And I was still hoping uh, don't, make, don't get me wrong, I was, I was loving my time in, in Dundee. Uh, I was grateful for Alex Ray um, to bring me up there. But 
I was hoping I could I could uh, I could sign I could come back and sign a longer term contract with Ibs because uh, I feel like it was an unfinished business and a lot of people I think uh, in Ibs supporter and in the background uh, background stuff and stuff like that for I uh, had an unfinished business with um, with Ibs. So what was it like being uh, on the same park as Lewis Stevenson? <laughs> Bebo, I we call him Bebo, but uh, it what do you call him? was it, it, Bebo. I call him Bebo. So he was um, he was quiet, but always give his best. Always give his best. I would not be surprised one day this guy will turn out to be a manager or a manager of Apes. But for me, it's, it's, he represents the club. He represents the club. Uh, you know what I mean? He, 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 I think through his vein, he's green, um, colour. Um, great guy. Um, always there. And even though he wasn't, you know what I mean? He, he got mixed with everybody. See, like, I don't think he's any... You, have, you can find one person who can talk bad about Lewis Stevenson. Because even with me, he come up to me when I was a bit down and stuff like that. I said, oh, keep going, Mikael. Oh, I can't believe you're not playing and you should be playing. Or you should, you know what I mean? At least be in the squad. But make Super Tenanian feel different. And you know what I mean? It, 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 I always said it's a game of opinion. Football is a game of opinion. One minute the manager... Uh, uh, somebody put things into his head, put a lot of crap into his head, and it doesn't matter what you do in the, into into the park. They he will not give you a, a look, and then next minute the manager will just think the world of you, and uh, you will be. Hello. Oh, I'm still here, man. Uh, in his butt. He's kind of on talking. It should affect it. So, uh, there. Oh, uh, right. It's okay. No, it's okay. So, uh, like I said, I said that he's, uh, you know, uh, is uh, this is an example. Aki Finwa. Everybody talk about him and everything, but the guys keep working. He was unemployed. He said he deserved a chance to be in a championship with all the records he made and all the sacrifice he made and so on, so on, so on. Now today is at the championship, and you see the interview. That was not hate. That was just passion, and to show the people and the managers who talk bad about him and put him down at the time, and nobody wanted to give him a look. One manager did, and look where he is now. So uh, those those managers probably unemployed themselves, and they probably knocking on everybody's door, and they ask themselves why people don't give them a chance. Because you're not being fair with people. If you're fair in life, things will turn around for you. If you're not unfair and big-headed because you're in a position where you can control things, you have to respect people. Simple as, simple as that. Were you in the same team when Scott Brown was at Hibs? Pardon? Were you in the same team when Scott Brown was No, no, no. It was already gone. It was already gone. All right. Already gone. Best game you've played in throughout your career? I think your, your connection is bad. I can't hear you properly. What did you say? No, I'll turn my internet off on my phone. Uh, best game that you've played in throughout your career? I would, play, I would say, funny enough, but I the best game, win the playoff with Hamilton against Ibs. Which is a it's a it's a pity, but you know what I mean. Um, and um, one of the game it was tense. It was against uh, Morton when we scored ten. We we win ten two, and I scored four goals. That was a uh, that was unbelievable. Uh, also with Dundee, I think I have memory of every game, uh, important like great game I played with teams. I've been in Scotland. It's unbelievable. Like Ibs, I can tell you, the the best game was when we beat Celtic. We were uh, ten man, uh, eleven. 
we beat Celtic with Dino, scored the winning goal. Um, uh, it was unbelievable. I was playing up top by myself. I think that was my second game uh, play for Ibs. And uh, I remember the manager just turned around to me and he said, you know, if you play like this every week, you could do and you can go very far into your career. I said, that's what I want to do. And if you can make me dean like this, I would be very happy. Um, and uh, I tried to push myself. That's why everybody in Ibs will tell you, I always give my whole body, my heart in the grass of, uh, of Ibs Stadium. Um, but unfortunately, the new manager didn't fancy me and it was, it was, uh, it was, it was a pity. I was, I was down. I remember Alex Ray picked me up uh, and was talking to me every morning because he knew how sad I was. Not sad to be undone to you because I was happy, don't get me wrong, but sad of how much I love the club and how much and how I left the club. Do you know what I mean? So um, it was one of them and we win with Hamilton. I was really, really happy. Don't give me wrong. But at one point I sit down, I remember in the change room and I never been to the OAS change room. So I was looking and um, my manager came up to me. He said, you love that club, didn't you? I said, yeah, it's a club like this. It's the club where I came back from the death, you know what I mean? For, uh, uh, I, I was dead. People never thought I could come back and uh, in England or Britain. And um, I was so grateful and I loved, you know, every morning when I was coming to the stadium, I was coming by bus. Just, just because I loved the, I loved the, I love the surrounding. I love Edinburgh. I lived there for six years, even though I was in Dundee or Hamilton. I still live there in Stockbridge. So I loved Edinburgh for my city. Best manager you've played under? I, uh, again, throughout your career. David Moyes. David Moyes is the top one. John Collins. Billy Reid. Um, John Colin, Billy Reed, and Alex Ray, and uh, and obviously uh, 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 Alex Neal in Hamilton. Would I will classify as Billy Reed? Best advice you've been given. Pardon? Best advice you've been given. Don't worry. The best advice. Don't worry about anybody. Because when you you um, don't worry about anybody, because I used to take things by heart a lot, and uh, I keep it in, and then when I go home, I just I just soak. Or when I train the next week, I uh, used to be not uh, the best, and they used to say to me, "Just do you, don't worry about anything else, just do you," and people will like you because I I'm a person like like to be loved. It's a, it, 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 and so it gives me great confidence. And uh, some manager knew, like, to deal with me in a certain matters. What inspires you? To, to do what? What inspires you? Mm, prove people wrong. And and uh, 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 always. That is a, a, a motivation. I'm a self-motivator, but whenever people think like I can't do, then I turn around and do it and challenge. That's all. What goals have you achieved? Pardon? What goals have you achieved? Uh, my dream was to be a professional football player, play at the top league, win the league, be the top striker, be the top goal scorer, be the player of the year, and play in the European Championship and play the World Cup. The only two things I haven't done is uh, to play the European Championship 
and to the World Cup. And I was my my goal was to play in a national team and score a trick. I managed to do with my national team of Guadeloupe. Finnish player you've played against. The what? The funniest player you've. The played. best player. The best Who player. The funniest. Ah, the funniest. To play with. Yeah. Uh, Craig Wetzker was one of them. Um, James McCarthy, McCarthy. It's funny. Dell, Dell boy. It was uh, Derek Lyle. It was uh, it was something also. Great character. And uh, let me give you one. Uh, Ibs, who was a great character. It was. Um, Funny enough, boozy. <laughs> <laughs> boozy. Um, who was your first name, Like I said, I, I was a great striker. I have a ton of million striker, like Ronaldo, the Brazilian Ronaldo. Was one of them. Eric Cantona uh, was one of them. Um, you know, I mean, like striker who they don't, they're not here to show up. You know, what I mean, they're here to score goals and they don't care. They, they, they machine. They just, you know, uh, is another one who I admire is Lewandowski. Lewandowski doesn't care about dribble to do step over to not make come some somebody and put in the top corner every game you want to score every game that guy wants to score that's why best goal you've scored best goal i've scored I scored a few to be fair unfortunately i haven't scored a, a unbelievable one at ibs but uh, i scored some pretty goals i have to say from my whole career um one I scored, it was uh, 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 in, with Nottingham Forest. I scored a volley. I scored a few in Ibs. It was unbelievable. Uh, in Dundee, sorry, and Hamilton. But I don't have one in mind just yet. I think um, just the over kick I scored in in. in the best I think uh, the whole lot will win is the, the overhead kick I scored in, in Norway. Best player played with? Mm. Boozy was unbelievable. Boozy was unbelievable. But uh, Zimema also. Marwan Zimema. What a player. Uh, um, Benji. Um, ben benji benji on his day when he decides i love to play with benji i love to play with uh stephen fletcher um stephen fletcher was unbelievable and this the guy who was younger than me but he teach me how to be selfish in front of goal this guy was shooting anywhere from any angle as soon as he is on the left foot and when I went to Dundee, I remember I was not passing the ball. Every time I had the ball in around 20 yards, I was not passing the ball. And it show you have to be greedy to be a top, uh, a top, top goal scorer. Best player you've played against? Um, there's a few again, but you have like the like of German Pennant, I played against Kanu. Uh, Gianfranco Zola was one of them. Um, yeah, Gianfranco Zola is, is just, it was not on this world. Um, ob obviously, Messi as well. Messi. Toughest player you've uh, played with? Tough one, John Terry. John Terry, uh, Tony Adams, and Robert Youth. I will always remember those three. They give me a hard time. I was 18 years old, 
and trust me, they didn't play with me. <laughs> Toughest player you've played against? Against or with? Against. Oh, okay. Well, um, Alex Neal. Alex Neal, I played against him. It was tough to play against him. But um, in Scotland, well, I would say the two defenders for, for, for Scotland. Um, oh, let me think. Uh, what's his name again? Uh, captain of Scotland. What's his name again? I can't remember his name now. He was captain of Scotland for years and years and years. He was a manager of uh, Partick Fissel and Wigan. Mm. Uh, it was it was tough, but uh, him and his uh, his partner in crime. He was uh, at Motherwell after. Um, I can't remember his name. He'll come back to me. Yeah. What team do you support? Me? I've got a team in every country. I've got a team uh, in Scotland. I won't pick a team where I played for because I, would, I definitely support Ips, Dundee and Hamilton. But in Scotland, It's them three, definitely. I don't see any other team. I don't watch any other team, to be honest with you. <laughs> but my team, my dream team, my heart is Marseille. Olympic Marseille. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a crazy about them. Who was the, the Joker and the Hibs team back then? The Joker? Yeah. It was a few there, a few, a few people was was Joker in there, uh, but we were staying. I stayed more with the French people, but the French people was Thierry Gattusi and Boozy for sure. Yeah. Funniest thing that's ever happened in the changing room throughout your career. My funniest things. Uh, I think I've done the funniest things, but I don't think it was funny for, for, for the people. At Nottingham Forest, when I was younger, um, I got, I passed my test, I got my car. I remember my first car was an Audi TT. And I came and Chris Paul Williams and German Jonas, uh, like when I came to my car, parked my car, so they come, and they, they puncture all my tires uh, when I come back. Uh, but I didn't know who was done it, but everybody was laughing. Uh, my phone got a, like they put everything into my pocket, like shampoo, whatever, whatever, whatever. I said, okay. One day I, went, I got injured. I put, I take all their clothes, I cut all their clothes. I put, I run the bath. And I put all the clothes into the bath, all of them. There was not one left. And I left to go trade. I left just before them. Um, and trust me, I remember this Walker knock on my door and he was not happy. <laughs> he was not happy. But after that, I didn't open the door, but to be honest with you, it was Marlon Airwood, Des Walker. And I knew I was going to take. I, I will be absolutely murdered and I, my neighbor called the police <laughs> and I only come out when this was there and there was like there we will get more of a training I remember I come from training the manager called me and he said right this is the bill you need to pay and uh, I came up Uh-huh. 
I don't know, man. It's, it's okay. No. Okay, but uh, they told me to never do this again. And uh, at training, I remember that training, I think it was the toughest training in my life because I come back with, I still got scars on my leg of tackle. Even the goalkeeper hurt me that day. The manager said, that's what you get when you, you play a stupid game. And I remember I was, I was not injured, but I had bruise all over, all over my body, I had bruise. I still got scars of, of my he, on my heels, on my leg, on my calf, on everything. I remember this day, I knew I had to wear my shin pad, but even the shin pad didn't help, trust me. <laughs> and the funniest thing that's ever happened uh, Trav went to an away game on the box. Funniest thing. Um, the, I was. It was. It was. I was. I was a prankster when I was younger. So I would say, like, when we were on the bus in Nottingham, we had the amazing bus. We had the old. Uh, Arsenal boss, great driver and everything. So one day I come to the game, and I was not in the squad. I was on the on the on the stand, and the bus driver said said to me, "Oh, do you want to watch the game on TV with me instead of these things?" I said, "Yeah." And then I think he went. He said to me, "Oh, I'm going for a slash," as he said, and I said, "Okay, cool." And then for a joke, I said to myself, I'm just going to drive that bus, park a little bit, hide myself and just making a like, hide it and making a like, oh, they stole the bus. Somebody came and just stole the bus. So I parked the things around 50 yards, but just around the corner, parked the bus. God knows how, how scary I was to drive in that bus. But my stepdad was a, a bus driver, so I knew how to, to do it. And then when he come, he, I said, he said, what the fuck's my boss? I said, somebody came, arm robbery, and they take all my stuff, and they just take the car. He was shaking, he was sweating, he started calling the police and stuff like that. I said, I got you, mate. He's around the corner. He, he wanted to punch me. <laughs> he wanted to punch me. And that was the, the funniest thing. It was a way to Burnley as well. It was at Burnley, so it was funny. It was so funny. I think the manager, Paul Hart, Paul Hart, still don't know about this. Well, you probably will now. <laughs> I probably will now, but, you know what I mean? It's a, it, it, it was a great manager. A bit tough on me, but it was a great manager. And uh, best ground you've played up? The best ground? St. James Park. Um, and then the the new uh, with the national team, I play against um, Costa Rica in uh, in Dallas. It was the new stadium, the new stadium where they have like a, a screen, a TV screen in the middle of stadium, like a giant gun stick. And I think the Dallas is the new stadium of Dallas Cowboy. It was hundred and ten thousand people in this in the stadium. It was. And it was close, so it was amazing. And the, it, the facility inside it was just out of the game. Like seriously, the change room was just like pfft. never seen anything like it up to up to this day. Uh, best boots you've ever bought? Gaza, and uh, Ooh, I finished boot. reading it. Huh? Boot. Yeah, uh, boots, sorry. Yeah. Um, boots and Nike. I was contracted with Nike when I was younger after I went to Adidas uh, when I was in Norway. Uh, 
and then I come back and then the Nike was not happy. Um, I canceled, well, not canceled my contract, but I didn't renew my contract to went to Adidas. So they didn't give me any free boots. So I just bought them and then sometime I was getting them, getting them for free. But Nike boots, Mercurial was top draw for me. Most skillful player you played with? Zimama. Zimama. Definitely Zimama. Definitely Zimama. Without shadow of doubt, Zimama. Uh, most skillful player you've played against? Gianfranco Zola and Messi. Played against Messi? Yeah. <laughs> Who was the be- uh, the hard man in the Hibs team? Jonesy, big defender Jones. Oh, Rob. Yeah, nearly fought with him, but well, one yeah. day, here, yeah, yeah the, sometime he was uh, he's a bit crazy, and I was not letting myself. Um, you know what I mean? Like, I can take. A few hints and bombs and stuff like that, but when you cross the line, that's me. What celebration you've ever done? I have loads. Those, you know, people even ask me, like, what was that mean? What was that? It was at the point, and I always do that. Is one celebration I'll do the most is because my, 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 I'm a fan of, of Ronaldo, so uh, it's one of them. Try to never celebrate. I don't think I ever celebrate against my old club when I score against them. In, in, just Dundee one time because I scored great goal, great volley. But it, 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 I have a ton of, of celebration which I can't even pinpoint one because he come naturally, he comes like this last second. There's nothing I... I think about, you know? Yeah. But no, obviously, that's all my questions. But what was the time the kept man like at Hibs? He was a good man uh, with his wife, Joyce, and his son. Yeah. Um, good man. Very good man. But first... If I if I'm being honest, at first I loved them. They helped me and everything with this, but I felt like it was a little bit of hypocrite as well. And that was it's not not disrespect to him and his wife and his son because they was the thing, but I felt like it was a bit of hypocrite in behind. Instead of if they had a problem with me or if I. If I did something to bother them, I would love them to just turn around and say, oh, Mikael, you do this, don't do that. I'll say, oh, okay, no problem, so sorry. You know what I mean? Sometimes I do stupid things anyway, uh, like everybody, but I, I was disappointed. I was disappointed and I always, but I always stay out of respect. I always uh, say hello to them. Um, because they love Ibs, they, 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 they love Ibs. But I'll tell you one person who loves Ibs and I miss the most, and I don't have his number, is Gavin. If, if Gavin watching this, Gav, please get in contact. Well, Gav, well Gavin Wilson? Uh, no, he's, a, he's not a football player. He was... In the back rooms, I think he was doing like recruit scouting. He was doing a lot of things, but I miss this guy. This guy was, you know, when I was a bit down, sometimes I call him. I think the first car I bought in Edinburgh was a, a, a in Scotland was a Golf, and he came all the way down with me. I tried to give him money for petrol. He was not having it. He was driving uh, buses as well for Ibs. Um, younger, like minivan and stuff like that. If Gav, 
you listen to this, please get in contact with me because I miss you a lot, man. He was, he helped me to settle in Edinburgh. Not just in Ibs, but in Edinburgh. In Edinburgh, definitely. How many likes have we got in this video? How many what? Likes. Don't know. Don't know. You we'll see that. Just get, just say a number. I'll say 10. Ah, well, what I'll do, uh, Mikael, is I'll end the um, recording, but I'll carry on chatting to you. Yeah, no problem. No problem. You're a big man.